The vector A here represents a vector field which is a distribution of quantity in space having both magnitude and direction. The speed and direction of the flow of fluid at each point in a stream is an example of a vector field. The force exerted at each location per unit charge is another example of a vector field. You can think of the flux of a vector field over a surface as the amount of that field that flows through the surface as shown in diagram A. In the simplest case of a uniform vector field A and surface S perpendicular to the direction of the field, the flux is defined as the product of the field magnitude and the area of the surface. So we've got the magnitude of the field times the surface area. This case is shown as in A. Note that if A is perpendicular to the surface, it is parallel to the unit vector n hat. Now if the vector field is uniform but not perpendicular to the surface, as in figure B, the flux may be determined simply by finding the component of A perpendicular to the surface and then multiplying that by the surface area. So to find the component of A perpendicular to the surface, we want to find the component of A in the direction of n hat. So by looking at this diagram, you can see that the A dot n is the component of A in the direction of n hat. So the flux may be determined simply by finding the component of A perpendicular to the surface and then mul multiplying that by the surface area. So this is where where we have this equation. But let's assume we have a curved surface area. Now the direction of n depends on which part of the surface you're considering. To deal with a different n hat and field vector a at each location, we divide the surface into small segments as shown here so that we can deal with the fact that this surface is curved. If we make segments sufficiently small, you can then assume that both n hat and the vector a are constant over each segment. So we're going to let n hat i represent the unit normal for the ith segment of area dai that flow through segment i as ai dot ni times the small segment of area DAI. Of course, this represents the flow through the segment I. So this here represents the flow through this small, tiny segment I. Now we'll let size of each segment shrink to zero. And then of course we get the integration. So we can rewrite this as the following. So that is the flow through the entire surface. It's the integral over the whole surface. Now for a closed surface, in other words, if we've got a surface that completely closed upon itself, uh, for example a sphere, the integral sign includes a circle. So in that case, we would write that as this. So we're going to be using that in Gauss's law later. From this point on, uh, instead of writing n hat dA, as in here, what I'm going to do is that's going to be replaced with a pseudo vector, if you like, called dA. So from now on, we're not going to write n hat dA every time. We're just going to assume that n hat dA equals this vector, dA. So that's simply there. So uh, to allow for a shorter, more concise way to write field equations. So now we can write above like so. Next, we describe Gauss's law, which uses this equation to define field flux through surfaces, where in that case the, the vector field A uh, is replaced with the vector field E, capital E. So we'll, uh, we'll be going on to that next.